training programs uh, is is the uh, new uh, new council person. That's AWC. That's AWC. Part of the new council training person. Uh, I am working uh, with several people on upcoming uh, 2012 session litigation uh, uh, legislation. Uh, AWC is the lobbyist for the cities on this, and we are working through AWC to get some changes made to for some of the onerous things that cost uh, cities and small, particularly small cities, large amounts of money. And. Uh, you don't accomplish anything in Olympia without lobbyists. I mean, that's just, sorry. I understand how that goes. But, but again, um, we have a very tight budget situation going into 2012, and it's likely only to get worse. And, um, and we don't currently have a plan B or plan C. Um, $1,000 isn't going to make or break us, but, but it is a contributor. And so, do we really get the value for the money we're spending? Uh, well, we get the, for sure we get the value out of the liability coverage. And they, when, if the window gets broken by, by somebody mowing, it goes to AWC and they can handle it. Uh, so any tort claim goes through them, and that's the liability. And can we get the liability without being a member? Okay, so then you have to go look for liability insurance. And it was an effort made last, uh, I guess it was 2010, uh, to look at that. It didn't really dig up anything different. So, uh, and uh, uh, the Carmel Gerald thing, for example, half, half of that settlement was paid by the AWC, uh, which is almost three years worth of uh, fees. Uh, of course, it paid on the insurance. So we can for that. The answer to your question, Medical dental. I was going to say the medical and dental for the employees is also through AWC. Yeah. Okay. Plus the staff you can call Association of Washington Cities, along with municipal research, which we do, and they can answer a lot of questions that we have where you don't have to take it to the attorney. Yeah. Okay. The finance, right training, finance training course I went to was set up by AWC, and I highly recommend if you can work it your schedule when one comes up. Uh, be in a small there in August, okay. Uh, and then the uh, uh, we get scholarships to all these things, so we've gotten probably our money back in scholarships going to these different uh, uh, areas. Can I point to a place where we got two thousand dollars back based on our thousand dollar? No, not really. Uh, hopefully, at the end of uh, summer, I will be able to point that uh, they the things that save that fee 10 times over. So again, um, I, I'm not very good, I'm new, not, not well versed in procedure or process. So um, if, I, if I violate that, please state so. But I guess I'm asking uh, for a poll of the council to whether or not we should maintain our Washington or our AWC association. That's fair. I absolutely think we should. No doubt about it. I, and it, I mean, I can validate that statement by saying that they're a partner. It's not, you know, uh, an agency that we pay a bill uh, every month or every year, and we don't get anything from it. We we use them almost on a daily basis. I can go to their website anytime, or call them, or send them an email, and they'll be more than happy to respond. I also. We use them. And we do give out scholarships. The two council members that will be going to work with the city council scholarship to go to that course. So it may only be $75 a piece, but when you take it away from that $1,000, it does add up. Yeah, I, I can, I get scholarships for them. Mm -hmm. All right. I, that's it for discussion tonight. Okay. So I, I have a couple. Yes. The Frontier for $1,137.06, that's a voucher 17005. I understand that's the communications. Is that telephone, fax, voicemail? Oops. What is that exactly? I'm just curious. 
Hence, one, two, three, four, five, six different invoices. Uh, let's see. If we can identify what this is. Here's one for $889. That's the bulk of it. That, that's City Hall. Yeah, the $603 is internet, which is... $600 a month for internet what, service? No, actually, it's 600 Let me look at here. I have to go, I have to read the numbers again. It's a hundred, it's $200 for internet service, because we have the, uh, what, are you, what do you call it? The, 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 the high speed line that we're hooked into. Yeah, so, but that does raise a question yeah. that I never thought of before. And you're subscribing to Bias, which offers internet. And no, they don't offer internet um, support. The support. Internet support, that's yeah. what they're saying. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it's that they can log in, they do log me in and log into our account so they can see what we're looking at. So they're not actually an internet provider, they're no. just using the internet mm -hmm. to provide a service. Now, we have, I went through this one time before, we've got three internet charges here for 200 bucks a pop mm -hmm. and one of them is the server mm -hmm. what's the other two one of them is are they is that the well they're charging well four no well, that's okay. copper no that's yeah. between three and four is yeah. copper and between uh north reservoir and four is copper so i'm not i i got a go through this. I went through this last time and I'm not sure if I got my questions answered or if I just got confused. But uh, <clears throat> do we pay a separate bill for is there internet over across the street over here at the shop? Nope. Is, no. is, is there internet over at the fire station? Oh, November to December. The, uh, I should read. Uh, or I've been able, you know, to read letters and numbers. Uh, pointed out it's a hundred it's one, two, it's three months. Bucks it's 200 bucks a month for the internet line that we got. And we pay that quarterly. So that's why there's three of them. Thank you. Now, the copper is $32 for, for okay. whatever charge it is. Let me see where that goes in. Now, this makes me, yeah, for one month, it's, 30, it's $32 for the copper line. There's another one. Stations. This is I'm trying to figure out what this one is. Well, I, I, we don't but, have to dice okay. the whole thing. Like, uh, all I'm yeah, I went through this one time before. Gosh, it's been six months now. All I'm asking is why there's you know six different charges for Frontier. And they're all minor, I mean, small, 91, 49, 32, 40, 35, but the big one's 889, and that's three well, months worth of uh, internet. Okay. And, and I can understand that. But these three other small ones, um, if, if it's service that we have to have, then great. If it's yeah, not, it's, then it's like different buildings. Different? The shop, the. Does the shop have a phone anymore? The shop does not have a phone anymore. And we fill the phone at well three. So I hope that we're not being charged for those. Because yeah. we have a phone over. Yes. Oh, no, well, three is still working. The phone at well three needs to be killed. We don't use it because our cell phones work out there. Yeah, I was going to take. I was going to take pull it out and I checked it here just. Okay. Where it was. Well, that, that's an that's an error. <clears throat> that should that needs to be that needs to be uh, aced. See, see, this stuff works out. I mean, you guys are doing the job. We we make. We screw up, we miss things, and you guys are catching it. That's exactly what the finance committee is supposed to do. Or otherwise, hire only perfect people. So, there is no phone or internet at the maintenance shop over here? No. And there's no phone or internet over no, at the phone. There's a phone over there. Oh, there's phone. Yeah, over we there. talked about that because Richard uses that for his 800 number. Yeah, that's fine. If the cell phone, that would be minutes. Plus, the cell phone doesn't work in that building. It doesn't? Nope. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. <laughs> nope. It's brick. And it's Sorry. Really? Oh, yeah. okay. 
Because I'm going to have to well three and walk in and use the cell phone and work fine. But I've been over here. Okay. Well, I'm going to yeah. work. Okay. Okay. Um, the fire investigation. Uh huh. One seven zero one seven Snohomish County Planning Professional Services for five hundred and thirty three dollars. What was that for? That was the fire at the was it the I think the apartment. Uh, over there next to the, the one that, I thought it was there was a fire at the apartment building I it was at two or three Croft Ave West. Right. Okay. Yeah. And it was uh, just an accidental fire, I think a kid playing with matches or something. And they investigated it. And you know we we, we the city was always responsible for that, and uh, so we, had, we created the ILA to make it official, the interlocal agreement. Mm -hmm. And so that's what happened. If a building catches on fire, the fire inspector comes out and inspects it and builds it. And I don't think we put anything in there for cost recovery for a fire inspection. We did put stuff in there for cost recovery for fire inspections, but not investigations. So we should modify. We should look at it. I mean, I don't think the person, you know, that's that that comes back to to a policy question: mm -hmm. is is that sort of safety thing something mm -hmm. the city pays for out of general fund uh, if there is if it's a pure accident, or is that what chance do we have for collecting it? If, you know, on that otherwise, and I, I again, that's going to take some effort to understand. Check with AWC. To check with AWC. We can also check with uh, what insurance coverages might be necessary to cover something like that. Because I'm sure the building, uh, the owner, if not the renter, had has fire insurance, and so perhaps that would be covered there. But that's that's the, one of those holes in our ordinances. So that's something else going to do this is to reinvestigate the. Uh, did you put that in the minutes. That's another ordinance investigation to see if we've got a hole in there that we spend money but don't recover its cost. I think that's all I have. Oh, wait a second. There's one more charge here for internet wireless for $75.97. Oh. A total of $218.20. What's that? Basically, for? that's for my computer for being out there and not coming back and forth. And we went to wireless on the computer, kind of away when the project. Oh, okay, good. Perfect. What's it for me? Maybe. But there will be another charge because Well 4 is going to have its own internet access so that John can access it through the SCADA system. So that so that'll be a that'll be a, whatever the charge that is for DSL. Well there's you know the city computer will probably have a lot of this well on the our city computer or laptop. So when I'm home, I can look at the system from home. And I can communicate from home. And I refuse to use my personal computer for that because it opens my personal computer up for I understand. legal stuff. And I'm glad you brought that. Uh, Evergreen Security System, 348? That's our security system. Building security. Okay, good enough. All right, now I'm really done. Okay, thank you. So we got well three, phone cut off, and do the ordinance investigation. Have we discussed all we need to discuss? I'm finished. You're finished? All those in favor of approval? Aye. 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 All opposed? Thank you very much. Okay, I want to really give my appreciation to the council for doing such a heads up job and thorough job on making the crap out of us. So we'll uh, keep up the good work. So now it's time for uh, last citizen comments. Any citizen comments? Come up, name and address. And your fence is looking good. Ralph Wood, 309 First Avenue West. <clears throat> this is a question. If uh, 
citizen applies for a building permit, does the council require John, uh, before issuing, granting the permit, uh, to, to ascertain if it meets the FEMA requirements? John knows what the FEMA requirements are. So John, yes. you can come in and you can apply for a permit, and then during the permit, that's investigated. So it's your job to uh, figure out what the FEMA requirement is and to enforce it by denying a building permit. Okay, and there's... The FEMA or the shoreline master plan, or the... The shoreline master plan, uh, the boundaries. That <clears throat> the last time I was attended a meeting, it was discussed the shoreline master plan, and from what I got from the FEMA, I asked about the boundaries of the areas, um, and was told they were just preliminary maps. They were, they were just preliminary maps. Have final maps been produced? This is for the shoreline management plan, and. Uh, the final, the only map we have for the FEMA is the one I sketched out uh, with the yellow borders around uh -huh. the water, waterways. Uh, and we don't, we haven't got a formal ordinance because again, as it's, it's sort of still in flux and I don't think anybody, uh, hardly anybody has a formal ordinance, but I do need to check the county again to see where they are. The last. They, so John would not be in a position to uh, deny it. Yeah, he's, he's in a position to deny it, and I'm in position based on to what? Based on a 250 foot offset. The, so that's very clear. About the, the the floodplain boundaries have nothing to do with it. The FEMA takes the outside of the 100 year floodplain. They call it something different now. 250 foot offset from the normal high water mark, and whatever channel migration occurs. Okay, now we don't get much channel migration inside Gold Bar City limits at much. But uh, you take a look, I think the only place the floodplain exceeds the uh, 250 foot offset in Gold Bar is over by uh, Wolfpack. And everywhere else, as far as I know, the 250 foot offset is more than the 100 year floodplain. Yes. So, uh, it includes a lot of areas that will never get flooded. It includes a lot of areas. In fact, physically includes, impossible to flood. It includes top of a hill that's like 20 or 30 feet above the Wallace River. But, but that's what we're stuck with? That's what actually is in effect? Yes. According to who? Well, according to FEMA and the letters they wrote and the letter I wrote back to them. And I will have a copy of what I said that the city will be doing we have not put it in ordinance yet because uh, we're doing it on a case-by-case -case basis and we were at the time waiting to see if Snohomish County was going to get any relaxation on the rules. They were, like I said, they were trying to move it from 250 to 150. And last I heard, they tossed in the towel on that. No one wants to take on the feds and it'll be up to an individual homeowner trying to get a permit to do the job. Well, I think there is a case going to the Supreme Court right now where a homeowner is taking on the feds for, that, for a very similar sort of thing. And, uh, but who knows that it may not necessarily apply to this thing. You know, that's the thing. So I, and I'm sorry, I wish I could give you the crisp answer. And I will make a point of touching base with the county again to see, uh, see where they are. Thank you. Any other citizen comments? And I will entertain a motion for adjournment. So moved. We have a second. I got it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So does anybody else?